post. Three more points. Nine six. Two scarlets. Totally by Gary Pierce. Gary Pierce. His first points of the afternoon. That's the halfway line. There are four minutes of the first half left. The lead is with Pilatley at 9 6. Butler to Kingston. Mark Douglas. Eddie Butler got the pass. Kingston waits. It's almost like the conveyor belt. Hewish drives on. Looks as the ball has it from Perkins. Into the 22 goal Pontypool. Squire picks up. This is a tremendous battering for the Pontypool pack. Goldsworthy drops the goal. Pierce foils him by being in the way. It's with Mark Brown. There is support there from Lee Jones. It's sent infield from Gallagher. Pontypool still holding the possession. At length, weary Finesse up to kill it from the wrong side. Another kick by Lewis, which could uh, tie the scores again, but a difficult one. The Pontypool crowd say yes. Oh, what a fine kick! That's the stop of which cup tie victors are made of. A very fine kick under pressure by Peter Lewis. It's 9-9. Steve Jones again, that's Pontypool's goal line. Things are as desperate as that for the cup holders. It's loose, and Kingston just got a hand on it. It's a drop out 22, is it? No, it went down from a Pontypool hand. This is the kind of pressure Pontypool like to exert on their opponents. Now they're feeling some of their own medicine, tasting it. Douglas goes again, Kingston read him. It's with Cooper, playing the ball at Stockholm. Pierce. Sending it to Mark Douglas again, but um, strange that they should run back to the power centre of this game. And Perkins sends it to Kingston. Goes with, he has it. Cooper has put him in trouble, he must run away. He hasn't run away, he's been penalised. Well, let's have another quick look at that. And um, the ball came back so safely. And the tragedy is just a loss of footwork on the greasy surface, and the ball is not released. That's the reason for the penalty. Martin Gravel prepares to try and restore Sinesley's lead on the stroke of half-time. He's done that. Sinesley moves ahead. It's 12-9 at the interval at Strenny Park. All penalties to Pontypool. A couple of penalties to Sinesley, but they have scored a precious try. They lead by three points. Sussman is on the boil. So with a score 12-9 to Finesley, we pick up the game again, just a little way into the second half at Strady Park. Nothing Phil May could do to prevent Bonapur winning the ruck, and Taylor moves it to Peter Lewis. Goff Davis into the 22 of Finesley. Levin Taylor still with the attack, but it's kicked clear. And now Lee Jones must go back into the Bonapur half to gather. He hasn't got much time. Oh, they didn't make sure of him, and he goes back to strength. And he sent it forward. The referee may be playing advantage because Lee Jones may have handled the ball while effectively checked. What's he going to do? Oh, it seems to be a set scrum. This Lee Jones in the centre has uh, shown that um, he can run at the Finesse midfield and present them with problems. He's having a good game. Incidentally, comes from West Wales. Mark Douglas to put the ball into a scrimmage on the halfway line. And that uh, seems likely to be the story of the next half hour as the pressure goes on. And can the Scarlets, drawing on all their character, withstand it? A quick heel is the answer. That's Gravel putting it behind Peter Lewis, almost as far as the on a pool 22. No way forward for Lewis, no angle either. And Tenesli able to play a surprising amount of this game up near their opponent's 22. That's well done by Scarlett's. Pierce starts running. Peter Morgan goes for the crash ball. It doesn't pay. Squire counter-attacks. Gets as far as the Ponypool 10-meter line. Look at that for distribution. That's Lee Jones. 
what confidence he's playing with. He came up to take the ball from the scrum half. Bill Bennett, an interesting midfield player. Yes, and the best player on the park this afternoon, David, so far in the midfield has been Lee Jones, the Polypool centre. We've all heard of as a tackle midfield, but Lee Jones has played exceptionally well and has looked the best attacking centre on the field. It's inside Polypool's uh, Panetti's Temi de Lyon. It's with Goldsworthy. It's now with Taylor. Can't get hold of it. Doesn't seem to have gone forward. That's Hewish. Hewish really good man. This is Mark Brown on the 22. Opening those long legs of his and sprinting. Now Hewish is back with the attack. That's Panetti's goal line. It's for them to use. Kingston sends it in field to Gallagher. He took the wrong option. He's taken down by Buchanan, but it's still danger. Panetti offside. What an anticlimax. To some tremendous rugby. Ponderpool still in that strong position, and Peter Lewis says he'll kick for goal. Big T for the ball, gardened by Peter Lewis. Yet again, the Ponderpool fullback asked to tie the score. It's through the middle, it's 12 12. Well, that's four penalty goals. He kicked the six which beat Bridge N, and that demonstrates the value of this man, this quiet doctor, to the furious Ponderpool pack and his 14 colleagues. Graham Price, incidentally, the only member of Ponderpool side ever to have played at Strally Park. He was here a dozen years ago on their last visit. Kingston to Mark Brown. Brown is uh, tremendously quick for such a tall man. That's what won him his cap in the autumn. And Ponderpool look as if they'll have to work for them all again. Unless he competes hard. It's with Goldsworthy. That's Blenheim Taylor picking up speed. Running back to strength. The forwards are with him, as you might expect. Squire has picked up. And they roll the scarlets out of the way. They drive over the 22 line. Kingston waits anxiously. This is Goldsworthy. This is Mark Brown. Releasing. Bryce the pickup. This is magnificent play by Ponderpool, but they have yet to finish it with points. Can they do that now? It's Lewis. It's Lewis. He's well tackled. He's missed by Hopkins. He's still going. There's a penalty he's taken high. That was desperation on the part of Tanessi. Somehow felt that they had to stop him, they went high. Yes, Peter Lewis had brushed off a couple of tacklers, he cut back inside, and I think a reflex tackle there, I don't think it was meant to do him a great deal of harm, but it was definitely a high tackle, it was dangerous, and deservedly a penalty to Pontypool. But magnificent play by their forwards to set up that opportunity for Peter Lewis. And Pontypool going to the lead for the second time. Answer yes. Peter Lewis, despite the shaking up he had, recovers to nose Ponderpool ahead at Strati Park. It's Ponderpool's 22 line. Mark Douglas holds the ball, the referee just organising the front row. Leslie win the ball, but under great difficulty. Pierce into the hands of Squires. He looked for support. The Ponderpool back row quicker there than. Penetti. And they get a penalty to the Scarlets for a hand at work on the ground by Ponderpool. So the penalty awards continue, and Gary Pierce is about to try and kick the latest one from a range of 30 to 35 meters. That's the situation, and um, that's the 12 points that he hopes to improve on. Can Gary Pierce tie the score for Tanessi? Deep breath. Is it three points? Yes, it is! Yes, it is. Tanessi are back on turn. This arrives to tell the referee that he'll kick a goal. The afternoon, a very nice one for rugby. It's crisp and cool, and the air is still for place kickers and line kickers. The 
range for Peter Lewis is 30 meters. And he makes no mistake. Wonderful, draw first blood. Uh, plenty of visiting supporters here, and they'll be happy about Peter Lewis's first effort of the game. Inside Cardiff's 10 meter line, 15 meters from touch. Plenty of bobbing and weaving by the front rows.
everybody loves all women. <laughs> Is that you too now, you boy? Michael. Of myself. <laughs> 